Hello and welcome to Bio Rules Video Lessons. Today we are going to be talking about limiting factors affecting photosynthesis. So what's going to be affecting the rate of photosynthesis? So how much photosynthesis do we see? First of all, how can we measure photosynthesis? Photosynthesis ultimately will happen by carbon dioxide being consumed, with water also being consumed, with the use of light producing glucose, producing oxygen. So there are a few ways for us to measure how much photosynthesis happens. One of them is the production of oxygen. So the more oxygen that's produced, more photosynthesis happens. Another way is for us to see how much glucose was produced. But glucose are a little bit tricky because the plant grows with that. So you can see indirectly how much the plant is growing. So that's another way that we see for glucose. While oxygen is a direct way of measuring photosynthesis. Another direct way is to see how much carbon dioxide was consumed. So how, the more carbon dioxide is consumed, more photosynthesis happened. And we could also measure water consumption, although water consumption is tricky because water is uh, necessary for the plant to live. Plants are full of water, so usually it's something not very easy to know how much water has been consumed. Okay? Consumption of carbon dioxide and production of oxygen, those are the easy ones. So, let's take a look now on factors that may be affecting photosynthesis rates. We will start with that one, carbon dioxide. So, carbon dioxide is a substrate for photosynthesis to happen. So, the idea is that the varying carbon dioxide might vary the rate of photosynthesis, how much photosynthesis is produced, you know, how much photosynthesis is happening at a certain time. In this graph here, we are labeling photosynthesis in the y-axis, which means photosynthesis happening. It's not stating that CO2 consuming, oxygen production, or whatever. It's just photosynthesis. And in the x-axis, we've put carbon dioxide concentration. So, first thing, if we have no carbon dioxide, we should have no photosynthesis. This is a no-brainer. It's quite you no know, direct. Because if you need carbon dioxide to make photosynthesis, no photosynthesis, no, no carbon dioxide, no photosynthesis. The trick now is what happens when you start increasing carbon dioxide. The more, the more carbon dioxide we put, theoretically you should have more photosynthesis. So it should be growing more or less linear with the increase on carbon dioxide. However, as carbon dioxide is substrate for a series of reactions, then it's not going to be a linear uh, increase, of the, uh, uh, no, a positive correlation forever. Okay? There will be a moment that the CO2 level might increase but no longer cause an increase in photosynthesis rates. At that point, some other factors might be limiting photosynthesis. Maybe it's the amount of chloroplasts, maybe it's uh, water, which is unlikely because everything there is made of with water. What may be light, but something else is influencing photosynthesis in this point over here. So basically, at this point, we can put more and more and more CO2, but something else is limiting, so it stays leveled. The same idea as substrate concentration influencing enzyme activity. Okay, another factor influencing photosynthesis, which is a classic and you know, has a, a, a true strong influence, is going to be light intensity. So, how light intensity influences photosynthesis? Same idea of graph, photosynthesis in the y-axis, and light on the x-axis. So if you have no light, we have no photosynthesis. No light, no photosynthesis, because light is necessary for photosynthesis to happen. No brain as well. And if we have more light, we should have more photosynthesis. More light, more photosynthesis, more light, more photosynthesis. However, there is a moment where it will stabilize. If I put more and more and more light, there will be a moment over here that the photosynthesis rate is not going to increase more because some other factors might be limiting uh, photosynthesis. So, CO2 is substrate, definitely by the definition of substrate, with lots of enzymes making photosynthesis to happen, CO2 is substrate, and light behaves as if it's a substrate, because it's necessary for the photosynthesis to happen, and the more light, more, more photosynthesis, up to a, a point where it levels up. Okay? So, those are the two classic ones that are going to have a strong effect on photosynthesis rates. Okay? So basically, 
if we increase CO2, if we increase light, we will have more photosynthesis up to a certain point. Water could also be a limiting factor, but much before it's affecting photosynthesis, everything else in the plant gets dry and the plant might die out. So it's uh, probably not going to be affecting photosynthesis as much as it's going to be affecting everything else in the plants. Okay? So, putting things together, temperature. Temperature is saw that affects enzymes, so how temperature is going to be affecting photosynthesis rates? In the same fashion that affects any other enzyme reaction. And actually pH also will be in the same way that pH affects any other kind of reaction. So there's no, no difference in here, so this no photosynthesis is made by a series of enzymes, so nothing is different from enzymes being affected by temperature. Okay? An interesting way of seeing is if you have a curve for light, so light influences photosynthesis, more light, more photosynthesis, up to a point where it levels up, but what happens if I change the CO2 concentration? So bear in mind that here we have how light influences photosynthesis, and now I'm going to be asking how CO2 is influencing how light influences photosynthesis. So we have three variables here. So how is this going to happen? If I have a low CO2 concentration, at very low, at zero, no light, we have no photosynthesis. More light, more photosynthesis. But it will be lower than the level with normal CO2 concentration. It will levels up in a smaller rate of photosynthesis because the CO2 is the limiting factor. And actually, if I do the opposite, if I increase, no, if I have a high CO2 concentration, the curve will be very similar, but, oh, sorry, starting here in the zero, no light, no photosynthesis, but it increases more or less in fashion, but it increases in a higher level, because uh, the limiting factor that was CO2 is you know, at a higher point. What we see here in the end is that uh, low CO2, you have a certain final rate of photosynthesis, normal, we have more and higher, so you have more and more and more. Remembering that if I put higher and higher and higher, at a certain point here, this is going to be stabilized, so this will be leveling out, because there will be other factors that are going to be limiting photosynthesis at that point. Okay? So, yeah, when you get to a lot of light, then what is limiting is the other factor, like in this case here, is going to be the CO2. So that's the idea on how it is going to be affecting you know, two of them together. So, rate of photosynthesis, CO2 plus water with light makes glucose and oxygen. And again, we repeating, we can measure it by measuring how much oxygen has been produced, like bubbles, volume of oxygen, oxygen concentration that you measure with sensors or whatever. It can be also directly measured with carbon dioxide concentration uh, by the same ways. You use sensors, you use other, other ways. And indirectly, you can measure the glucose concentration that are not actually glucose concentration. You may measure the growth of the plants. Uh, one typical graph when we are measuring oxygen release by a plant is that sometimes this graph is going to have a positive value and a negative value. And the question is, how come oxygen, if it's produced by photosynthesis, how come it can be negative? The answer is that when you have photosynthesis, oxygen is produced. But if you have no photosynthesis, like no light, and the plant is doing cell respiration, oxygen is going to be consumed. So in this graph here, what's being represented here is that above the zero here, what we have is a positive oxygen release, which means we have more photosynthesis happening than cell respiration happening. So the plant ends up releasing more oxygen than it is consuming. In below the zero, what happens is that we have a negative oxygen production and oxygen release because this plant at this point is going to be producing less oxygen then it's consuming by respiration. And what's interesting then is that you're going to be starting the graph there because when there is no light, this axis here, this is light. Okay? When you have no light, we have no photosynthesis, and, but we have cell respiration. So it starts with a negative value. And if we have more light, we have more photosynthesis and more photosynthesis and more photosynthesis, all the way when you get to this point over here where 
the photosynthesis rate equals the respiration rate and the oxygen release gets to zero. Okay? This one is called photic compensation point, the point where photosynthesis and cell respiration are happening with the same production of oxygen. Above that, okay, photic compensation point over there, okay? Above that, it behaves as any other photosynthesis graph. The more light, more photosynthesis, up to a moment where you get you know, to a, a, another limiting factor stabilizing, and then it stays there forever, okay? This is a very important graph because here, instead of being photosynthesis rate, it's oxygen that mixes photosynthesis and respiration together, okay? I hope you had fun, and take your time now to do a little quiz to check out your learning. I see you in class. Bye-bye.